Well, hello. I gotta tell you that uh, I was a little blown away by uh, a little bit of research I was doing before this video. Well, never mind that pop up. <laughs> um, yeah. I mean, it's Monday. For Geo Guesser, hello. Hi, how you doing? Um, that we're still doing the states every Monday. And after the, uh, well, to be frank, boring Nebraska, just because, eh, it's not interesting, at least to me. I was going into Nevada, and, <clears throat> excuse me, I was expecting a little bit more interest just because of how unique it is as far as the state, but actually reading up on the Wikipedia, there's quite a bit here. I was quite uh, surprised and impressed. Now, that's not saying that other states that we've done that I've deemed kind of boring and eh, don't have interesting backstories. It's just either one, the things they find interesting aren't interesting to me at all, or the person who is actually building the Wikipedia page for the state. It wasn't as compelling as at least Nevada's is, so <clears throat> as I clear my throat, still try to wake up. We start the game, and let's do it. So. Here's Nevada, very much. I'm sure a lot of people, at least in the U.S., or the world, I should say, very much know about Vegas, if they know anything about Nevada, where it's gambling, casinos, prostitution, um, nuclear sites. It's, it's, it, it runs the gambit. So we're going to do this real quick, just so, because the clock is running. Here's Nevada. It's, uh, how big is it? Um, the size. I just had it here. Seventh largest in area, next to California, Oregon, Idaho, Utah, and Arizona. Um, it's a lot of desert. Uh, it comes from the name Sierra Nevada when it was part of the uh, name by Spanish explorers when they came across it because it was called Snowy Mountains. I guess that's what it means in Spanish, Sierra Nevadas. Um, it was first part of the Spanish. Then I believe um, it was absorbed into Mexico, and then the Mexican-American War, the U.S. took it. Um, and then it was part of uh, Oregon Territory, and then part of Utah's territory, and then it was made a state. Uh, I'm not seeing any. This is a very foggy, foggy road here. Um, I'm a little like, oh, i got to get it all out, because there's a lot in this, and I don't know if I'm going to have enough time to get through all the cute little anecdotes I had that I found about the state. Um, it was made into a state. It was called the Battleborn State, because um, it was one of the two states that was created during the Civil War, the other being West Virginia. And not to really, uh, I guess, belittle um, Nevada, but... Car Lane? Oh, I don't know what that is. It's double R. Uh, if you know where most of the Civil War happened, I mean, it was a little bit over here. It's kind of out of the way. West Virginia, a little bit closer to the action here. Nevada's kind of a bit of a way. Um, it is, let's get through the rest of the basics. Known as the Silver State, it's its official nickname, but you can look at the uh, uh, the flag of it, which I didn't know that was the flag of it. I mean... Man, I'm not getting any information on this. I feel like I may have gone the wrong way. Uh, let's take a look. Yeah, that doesn't help me. We're going to hit back and go the other way. Maybe there's something here. I think there is. We've got California Road and Heart Lane. I think we might be on one of these roads. Uh, I'm going to guess, like, maybe here. I'm probably wrong, but here we go. Anyway, it's uh, 36th state in the Union, October 30, 31st, 1864. Its capital is Carson City, which is right here, and Vegas is down there. Um, let's see. Its total area, as I said, 7th. 
Um, elevation's 5,500 feet, which is uh, boundary peak. Oh, we're not going to see that sign because this goddamn car. I'm hoping I at least got close. I mean, I'm going to get probably bad scores if a lot of these end up being like this, but it is a lot of Great Basin. It's like a <clears throat> defining territory. It's deserts, high mountains, a little bit of water down here. You got the Hoover Dam down here. And I'm like, got to get all this out, got to get it all out. Okay, we were way up north here. On the loneliest road in America, apparently. Well, hopefully I'll get to that, but i got to finish through the rest of this stuff. Lowest elevation is the Colorado River, which is down south here. Bam, bam. Um, let's see here. Anything else? That's basically it. Uh, geography. Yeah, we've got that. Climate's crazy, as it being a desert. Uh, we talk about the temperature. Oh, we do have a sign here. Uh, we're on to alternate 395. So I think we're on 395, wherever that is. I'm going to see. There's 395. So we're over here. So I guess it's this chunk here. Let's see if we find old 395 here. We got the bus route for 395. Does it continue on? We have alternate. Okay. So we're in this chunk. Oh, there's a. Oh, it's a big. It's a big road. Okay, so it's this part of the state. Okay, so we have that at least. Um, now where was I? Um, where was that thing? The the hottest temperature. Nevada's highest recorded temperature is 125 degrees Fahrenheit, which is 52 Celsius at Lachlan. Can I see that in the map real quick? No, it doesn't show it. On June 29th, 94, and the lowest recorded is 50 below, which is minus 46 centigrade at San Jacinto. It doesn't really show it on the map here either. Uh, Nevada's 125 reading is the third highest statewide record high temperature in the U.S., just behind Arizona's 128, and California's 134. So this thing runs the gamut. Like I said, if you kind of don't know um, Nevada as far as geography goes, well, get me back there. I want to go on that. No. Get me over what happened. I'm going to hit home. All right. Get back to this lane. I want to get on that exit ramp. If I can. Okay, it did. Thank you. Okay, now it didn't. What the fuck? Ah, uh, come on. I got two minutes left. I am really trying to get. We're going to go here. No, we're going to go here. And then we're going to continue this way as we try to get up this exit ramp. It won't let me. Okay, it won't let me. This is a very disorienting. Okay, we have Interstate 580. Okay, so we have a section here at least, which is going to Reno. We're on 95 North, that's Reno. So we're like around here. Maybe, maybe around here. Maybe this, I'm gonna say. I can't maybe find on the other side of the road here. But yeah, the, the, the climate here is all over the place. It, it has, like I said, the deserts, the mountains, the gambling. It's got everything. Okay, that's just saying the old one. I want to see what this sign says here. I got 50 seconds left, and I've got to like nothing that I wanted to talk about. <laughs> the problem with apparently finding a very interesting... Uh, Chocolate factory, huh? Very interesting state. Anyway, that's the temperature. Um, let's see, counties. We don't care about counties. Um, it's a silver state, and that's where a lot of its uh, population rush came from. Oh, yeah, back to the state. The reason why it was made a state when it was is because um, Lincoln was running for presidency, and he was a bit worried that um, he wasn't going to have enough like electorates. Oh, we have Washoe City. Washoe City. 
Ah, uh, okay. So yeah, we're like, we are here. I'm gonna say, oh, okay. I did click it. Did I click in time? I did not click in time. So thankfully, it gave me the score I had before. Um, it was worried that uh, Lincoln was gonna have enough um electorates to get him into a uh, presidency. So they rushed along and made uh, Nevada a state. And since it had its industry locations because of mining and the rush of population out there, it became a state, even though it didn't have enough of a population to actually become a state, because apparently you needed at least 60,000 residents in order to become a state. And it only had about uh, around 10,000. Uh, we'll read this little blurb here. So eight days before the election of 1864, Nevada became the 36th state in the Union, despite lacking the minimum requisite 60,000 residents in order to become a state. As the time was just a little more than 10,000. Rather than sending Nevada's constitution to Washington by the Pony Express, which was the way that they uh, did mail, basically. Um, like, telegraph was coming around, but a lot of the time it was people on horses. Um, the full text was sent by telegraph at a cost of, this was back in 1864 money, so you can do the, the conversion rate yourself. Uh, it was sent by telegraph at a cost of $3,416.77, which was the most costly telegraph on file for a single dispatch. Finally, the response from Washington came in October 31st, 1864, and the quote was, The pain is over. The child is born. Nevada, this day, was admitted to the Union. Statehood was rushed to the state of, rushed to the date of October 31st to help ensure Lincoln's re-election on November 8th and post-war, post-Civil War Republican dom dominance in Congress as Nevada's mining-based economy tied it to the more industrialized Union, the North. As it turned out, however, Lincoln and the Republicans won election handily and did not need Nevada's help. Um, which is crazy that they rushed it and they were a bit panicky, but hey, they didn't need it at the end. Um, let's see here. So, if you're unaware of Nevada and kind of what it was, what it, at least in the U.S. is known for, it's, it's the big gambling. It's the gambling city. You got Vegas, which is right down here. Now, it's not the only location, at least in the U.S., that gambling exists. There's a lot of states that have legalized gambling. I think you've got Atlantic City in Jersey. You've got Bronson, Missouri. Um, you got Nevada. You got a lot of places. I think... Jersey, New Jersey just became one of the most recent states to legalize it, at least. Maybe that's sports gambling. But either way, um, gambling in Vegas is one of the most um, libertarian states, um, which is like self rights, you know, taxation is theft type things that you can hear catchphrases of people talking about that stuff. What is this thing? No, it's just a little, just a little wagon. Um, uh, so yeah, Vegas, gambling. It's uh, also the only state in the U.S. where prostitution is legal. However, it's not legal in the big metropolitan areas, which, you know, Las Vegas, Carson City, Reno, they're not, they're not um, permitted there. So what a lot of places will do will go right outside the uh, boundaries of the city and or municipalities. I forget what the actual... Uh, term is they use like one of the most famous ones at least it was for me um because back when i listened to howard stern a lot he would uh why am i going this way i want to go that way i want to go thank you um was the bunny ranch as it's called um there's there was at least a uh hbo show about it but i think the guy who ran it for a while would go on stern um this is a weird road That's not helping me. I don't think I'm going to see like a route sign anywhere. We do have a police truck. But it's, uh, I don't know if I'm going to get any, uh, like location so much. Are you going to let me? Lim? Is that Las Vegas Metro? LVM? Maybe? 
Um, uh, so I'm going to really get started out when uh, the mining towns hit. So there was a lot of unregulated gambling. was commonplace in early Nevada towns, but it was outlawed in 1909 as part of an anti-gambling crusade. You know, prohibition wasn't that far behind either. So, um, but then following declines in mining and the Great Depression, uh, Nevada legalized gambling on March 19th, 1931. And uh, right along that, it also became one of the most liberal uh, divorce states where at the time you didn't, it, it was just, uh, what was it called? What's the actual wording? Um, no fault divorce where you didn't, let's see what it says, blurb here. It's delusion of a marriage does not require showing of wrongdoing by either party. Um, so. A lot of states, they were just like, hey, you can just divorce for whatever. All right. I don't know where this is, but I'm thinking it's Las Vegas uh, metro area. So I'm going to say where it might be like down here, just because I said LVM. So I think that's probably where this is. It's around here. I feel I could be wrong, as I would not be surprised. But there was a. Um, but we were very much on the border, apparently. Oh, it's a lot of grids out here. Sandy Valley Baptist Church. Oh, okay. I don't know what's, what's out. Oh, Sandy Valley. Okay. Um, uh, quick little thing about this, man. I am just trying to cram all this in here because this, this is pretty interesting to me. Um, so let's see here. Uh, there was a court case, Williams versus North Carolina, in, in which the U.S. Supreme Court ruled that North Carolina had to give full faith and credit to Nevada's divorce, which was basically, I think, two people, uh, someone got a divorce in North Carolina in Vegas, and since they got it in a state they didn't exist, it lived in, the Supreme Court was like, well, you got it, so you're going to have to at least uh, like respect it that it actually happened. But then. Um, Later on, it was amended to say that you didn't really need to recognize the divorce unless one of the parties was living in the uh, city at the time of the divorce and was granted. And granted the form, the state was entitled to make its own determination. So, say you didn't live in a state, say you live in California, never lived in Nevada, you got the divorce. Um, California didn't need to recognize that divorce because you didn't live in Nevada at all. So, you know, you tried to circumvent the rules of your state by doing that. And so now they don't need to do that anymore. Um, let's see, you got gambling, the prostitution was taken care of, the divorce thing. Another thing about the state itself is 81% of the state territory is actually owned by the government. Uh, back when they were doing homesteading, if you remember from previous videos um, that I gave where the government was giving out um, parcels of land to people if they could actually, you know, grow farms, make it into a hospitable place. However, if you're unaware, a lot of Nevada kind of looks like this. So homesteading in that fact really didn't work. Um, a lot of people, what they would do is just settle along rivers and grow farm, grow crops there, and then have their livestock kind of graze in the pastures bordering that area. And a lot of that still kind of happens now, but it was very hard to actually, I guess, terraform, you could say, the land out here. Oh, maybe we're going to see what this location is, if this bus actually says it. I think we're going to be paced too far. No, we did get it. Washoe County. Now, the problem is, if you have not seen what some of the counties in this state look like, they're massive. So I don't know if I'm actually going to uh, find where this is. Um, but we also have uh, a lot of nuclear testing happened out in uh, Nevada. So you've got Nevada test site. Well, I'm going to wait until I actually finish this to talk about that part. But you've got Area 51. There's a bunch of different areas. They're all out here in uh, Nevada. Um, you've had 
nuclear testing up in the air, underground, on the surface. It, it all happened out here. I mean, it doesn't happen anymore. I feel like I'm just getting into a suburban road out here. So I'm going to go... I'm going to go this way, but I'm going to turn right. So I feel... No, I'm going to get on this road. And then I'm going to go right. Thank you. Um, we're going to keep going. Because I feel... Speed limit 25. Washoe County. That's a fancy looking Humvee there, though. It's a very old model. Uh, if you were to look at the population uh, density of the state, I mean, you can also see the the way the counties are set up here and how massive some of these are. Like, one's a giant hammer <laughs> just in the middle of the state. It's, it's crazy. Um, but I got a minute left, and I am not finding anything to let me know where we are. A lot of ranch houses out here, which are sprawling one-level buildings or style homes. I don't know many style homes. Okay, this, this, this is at least... We've got the estates. Oh, great. That doesn't help me. Uh, U.S. Route what? We're on the Mountain Rose Highway. That doesn't help me. Yeah. Monte Vista, which doesn't exist on that side. Uh, we're, oh, no. No. Thank you. Okay, we're going this way. I want to see this sign. Crystal Bay. Incline Village. The fuck? Callahan Road. Man, this, this is, this is going to go bad. Okay, come on. Come on. Come on, give me something. Give me anything. Okay. Um, that wasn't going to help me. That was just going to say a road. Please. Please anything. Thompson Lane. That doesn't help me. Uh, 15 seconds. Incline Village. Um, I'm going to say here. I've got zero idea. Indian Springs. Nothing helps me there. Nothing. Yep. We were all the way over here. See, I had no idea. At least I got part of that city, uh, country, the state, right? All right, anyway, about the nuclear testing here. Nevada test site, which was 65 miles northwest of the city of Las Vegas. So you've got Vegas down here, which is maybe around here. Well, Mercury, it's around here. This is like a government town. Where a lot of government workers actually live, and you need a permit to overnight here. Um, it was founded January 11, 1951, for the testing of nuclear weapons. The site consists of about 1,350 square miles of desert and mountainous terrain. Nuclear testing at Nevada test site began with a one kiloton bomb dropped on a place called Frenchman Flat on January 27, 1951. The last atmospheres test was atmospheric test where they blow it up in the sky. It was conducted July 17, 1962, and the underground testing of weapons continued until suffered. Uh, ugh. Start that sentence again. I'm just shoving these words out of my mouth. Underground testing of weapons continued until September 23, 23rd, because that's the official way of saying it, 1992. It is, the location is known for having the highest concentration of nuclear detonated weapons in the U.S. Uh, so, a little quick blurb again, 80%, over 80% of the state area is owned by the federal government. Primary reason for this is because the homesteads were not permitted in large enough air sizes to be viable in the air conditions that prevail throughout the, uh, Nevada. Um, so that's that. Was there, there is other things I wanted to talk about. There's, there's a lot here. Oh, yeah. I think we're on the last one now. Yes, we are. So I wanted to talk about something called the loneliest road in America. It was a, uh, where is it? Where is it? Where is? Here we go. We're going to look in this link right here. <clears throat> so apparently uh, there was an article in Life Magazine in July of 1986. And I guess it was supposed to, uh, be like a derogatory term 
Ooh, these are going to be some expensive houses here. Sotheby's is selling this house. It's supposed to be derog a pejorative, excuse me, for being a lonely stretch of road, which just kind of goes over nothing. So this is Route 50. All of this. And if you actually just saw, like, uh, topographical or just, like, satellite imagery, there's nothing on any of this road. Because I guess they wanted to point out, hey, it's a long, boring stretch of road. There's nothing here. But then people just went ahead and, like, grasped on that and made it into a positive saying, hey, you want to see, like, just drive out in nature and see nothing forever. Go ahead and take this road. Which seems interesting to me. I would actually do that. These are some nice homes. Which makes me feel like, is Sierra a, uh, well, where's Lake Tahoe? That might be on the other border here. So Tahoe's, I think we're like over here. I feel around this area. Because you got Lake Tahoe here, big ski stuff. So I'm going to say we're like in Kingsbury. Yeah, Tahoe Remax, okay. But these are some very beautiful houses over here. But I'm very surprised uh, reading up on this. I feel there's even more that I didn't get to that I wanted to about um, Nevada after reading that blurb. Um, this is definitely a place I'd like to go visit, and I don't really give a shit about I guess, I mean, I'd go see it just because it's, it's there. Granted, if you're um, wanting to visit it and at least get the most for your money, only go to uh, Vegas in the summer. Now, granted, summer, as you see some of the temperatures that we talked about, is incredibly hot. But a lot of the casinos, at least, have underground tunnels connecting them to each other if you go on the strip there so you never actually have to go outside and get baked by the sun um other little blurbs i know if you were ever to actually get a cab it's illegal for them to stop i believe on the strip they have to pull into the casinos themselves so if you try to flag down a taxi on like major roads there they're not going to stop for you um but Going in the winter time to Vegas is prohibitively expensive, at least flight tickets and probably renting rooms. Like if you just try to go ahead and compare, I mean, maybe right now is not the best time to compare because, you know, everything's shut down. I mean, recently Nevada has been pushing to uh, open up the state again, you know, because a lot of their revenue becomes from uh, um, tourism and the casinos. Now, if I actually go ahead and look, it actually shows on the Wikipedia page the rankings of uh, shows the rankings of employers of the state. Where is it? Oh, I didn't even get to the, the sports teams here. That's oh, I ran out of time. Jesus, I'm just so engulfed on this one here. Um, yeah, the largest employers in the state ranked one is Clark County School District, followed by Washoe County School District, then Clark County, then uh, C. Then number four is a casino, number five is a casino, number six is a casino, seven is a casino, eight is a casino, casino, nine is a police department, and ten is another casino. So a lot of their um, revenue becomes from touristry, and they wanted to open that stuff up as soon as possible. Um, yeah, so in summary, this is a far more impressive state than I gave it any credit for, and hope you at least got as interested in it as, wow, this was a long one, compared to some of the other ones. Um, yeah, that's our new video. I'd like to thank you again for all watching, and going on us through the tour of the states. If you had any comments, questions, concerns, complaints. Um, anecdotes yourself, anything at all, go ahead and put them in the comments below. I will read them and get back to you along with your like, favorite, comment, subscribes. Come back on Wednesday when my voice hopefully isn't dried out from all this talking that I've done so far for another episode of GeoGuessr. So until then, we'll see you soon. Good.